a what episode is this 300 to 278 no. 278 we have doug from the who's right podcast back it's been a while hello how are you doing how's everybody doing oh doing great. yeah going very strong good, doug very good you son of a bitch what's all this i hear about you hating on me <laughs> so b- b- before we start arguing with each other i i would like to i'm not extending an olive branch because that wouldn't uh, that would mean that i don't want to argue mm-hmm. so i i still want to argue but i want you guys to know that i truly ex- uh, appreciate all the exposure you've given us you're Man, welcome you sound like so, such a bitch oh my yeah, god what a pussy good lord <laughs> So, Doug, how come you went out of your way to avoid me when I was in America? <laughs> yeah, what's that about, actually? That's all right, a good all point. right, let's, let's so much get for right into thanking this. Kaya no, for his exposure. Shut the, fuck, shut the fuck up for a second. Shut the fuck up for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't know what you guys know, if anything, about what Kaya is referring to, but I assure you, it is complete bullshit, whatever he is about to feed you. <laughs> so, well, all I know is, okay, without saying where you or I were, or where you live, we were three hours of a drive away from one another at some point, and you refused to fucking meet with me. Okay, so that's your your version of the story. Now I'll tell my version of the story. <laughs> so I asked Kaya what he's up to, and he said, I'm packing for my trip. And I say, what trip? And he says, I'm coming to America. <laughs> oh, wh- when are you doing that? And why is this the first I've fucking heard of it, you douchebag? <laughs> well, I- I've got a whole itinerary set up. I'm going here, and I'm going here, and I'm seeing this person, and I'm going to be here. And I'm like... How, how come I'm not on that list? Well, you're too far away. I checked the map. It's like Are we, fucking three. Wait, wait, it's, oh, okay, shut up. Okay. It's my, my fucking turn. No, it's, it's, no, <laughs> no it's you, you had your chance. You, <laughs> fuck you. You had, you had your chance. You can rebut after I, I give my version of the story. So I, I said, we're only three hours away. We should get together. Nothing. Two fucking days. Nothing. Hey, when are you going to be here? I'm already here. Okay, <laughs> so, so you want to get together? Nothing. Nothing. The day before this he's got to fucking accurate. leave, the day he, before he has to fucking fly out, why don't you come visit me, you, what'd you call me, you fat waste of blood? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> and this is your friend, I, Kaya. So, so he, I he would didn't want to meet check you. I would fact check you, but I'm he banned, didn't so meet, I cannot he access didn't, our DMs. <laughs> he didn't want to meet halfway. He wanted me to drive to him and watch him pack and give him a ride to the fucking airport. <laughs> I did not say that. Okay, you're embellishing. First of all, you're leaving out the part where I was making plans for my trip and you weren't speaking to me for a month because you were upset that I called you fat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you How did could not you, speak Doug? to me for a month. Now, now who's embellishing? <laughs> you know, it's true. And I did not ask you to drive me to the fucking airport or ask you to watch me pack. <laughs> I would have taken you out to dinner or something. <laughs> At nine o'clock in the fucking morning? Yeah, and I, a nice dinner <laughs> at the airport. Breakfast then. It's really late, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Kaya's I Doug think... avoided me because he had a shitty fucking meeting at his workplace that he had nah, to give. A, I think Doug's telling the truth. Kaya was literally an hour from Andrew and I, and we had no idea he was in, in America. Yep. He was literally like an hour away from us and never yeah. told us. What a fucking douchebag, man. <laughs> I am trying to cram in to meet as many new people as possible. Okay, but <laughs> that was like new. the whole point. Why do you think I was a And you're allowed to do that, Kaya. You just also never told us you were coming in general. <laughs> so what if we ran into you at the grocery store and be like, what the fuck, Kaya? What are you doing here? <laughs> the grocery store in Pensacola? <laughs> you never know. Maybe they, you drive maybe there they for have an the hour. best milk. Maybe that's where I have to go. You never know. You would, okay. You, th- you would have thought it was Kai's me. twin. It would have been this twin. is about the fact that Doug lives in bumfuck nowhere, but I was only an, a car drive away from him, a brief drive, and he would not deign himself to just get in a car and meet me, even halfway. You didn't tell him! <laughs> you gave I him told, no what? warning! <laughs> okay, again, I did give him a warning, and he did not respond to me because I called him fat. Why didn't you and meet him for a month? Kaya, how, how long have you and I known each other? Yeah, Dad, that's the first time know. you yeah. called him fat. Doug does not seem like the type who would care whatever you call him. He'd still want to, like, hang out. Well, he was upset about something. I don't know what. And he didn't <laughs> talk to me for a month. <laughs> Is this going to be like a couple's counseling <laughs> session? <laughs> we, we need to get to no, the I, root of this. What's wrong? 
so I, I believe that you guys have more to be upset about than I do. If at no, least he don't told to me deflect. he was coming. <laughs> yeah, no, he You're didn't deflecting. even he didn't mention that trip to us at all. And then the first place he stopped, I think, was Pensacola, which is I don't even think it's a full hour from where Andrew and I are. So, <laughs> yeah. That's fucked up, Kyle. We, we only <laughs> found out because during the podcast, he was so drunk and explaining that he was in his uh, America with Brady. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the asshole. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll take this one. You are still the asshole for not meeting me. We can both be assholes, Doug. I know, I'm Team Doug on this one, and that hurts to say. Believe me. But I, I, I think you should have made an effort to meet him, at least. <laughs> Yeah, he, he couldn't even be bothered to go out of his fucking way. Like, hey, can can you stop everything that you got going on in your life and drive to me? No, I, I, I can't literally make it. well I you're, asked you're if a piece I can of come shit. to you and you told me that you have a presentation you to give and that you're packed and you'd have busy week. You never once mentioned anything about driving anywhere <laughs> in this direction. Oh, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. And you know I can't no. debunk you because How I can't long have access you guys our DMs. I guarantee Doug's side is the right one. Kaya couldn't be bothered to send a no. message, let alone make a drive. <laughs> oh my god, am I married to all of you now? <laughs> I feel you like I call five anymore. Wives. So I, I, before we move on, I am kind of curious, Kaya, why would you not even tell your co-host that you're going to be in the same country as them? Uh, not even because same country, the same area there. of the same state. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I don't know how far much. apart everybody is. Point is, I was trying to cram meeting as many people in there as possible. As Doug apparently got from my messages, I was traveling all the fucking time trying to meet new people. Okay, that that's fine, but why not met, tell like, anybody on your show that you talk to every week, several times a week, that you're going to visit the same country as them? To be fair, he and, did he did tell me, but I'm also in Australia, so I'm not sure. Yeah, that why counts. would he tell you out of the four of us? What's fucking the secret? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was like, "Hey, Jackson, just so you know, I'm going to be in America if you want to meet up." <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, my trip wasn't about all of you. I guess I'm sorry, Doug. No, hey, you're the one that brought it up. I was just going to let it go. I'm I don't, sorry I, don't know I what came you to America for the first time in like four years, Doug, and you couldn't take a hour and a half of a drive. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, Doug. I apologize I, that I'm hey, not dickhead, important if enough. I took an hour and a half, if I took an hour and a half drive, I would only be halfway there. What, what would be the fucking point in that? <laughs> I, was, I was telling you, meet me halfway. That was my question. No, you specifically said, can you come to the city in which I am in? <laughs> oh my god, you're such a fucking liar. You're such a fucking liar. Check no, our DMs. I, yeah, is it okay to say the state that, or the city that you were visiting? No. I think he's already said it. I think Charlie already oh. did earlier. Well, no, no, he was, uh, I mentioned Pensacola, but he was closer mm -hmm. than that at one point. Uh, I oh, don't know where even, he was. <laughs> even closer, yeah, okay. Yeah, why can't you, don't why can't you say the city closer that you were Doug. in? Like that? why, because that's where my can't... friends live. I don't want them to know where I was. I also you, know, like you know why? No, you know, you know why? Man. Because he's dude, got dude. fucking people. No, he's got people spread all over the United States that are wondering why the fuck didn't he come <laughs> visit me? And he doesn't want to pinpoint where his fucking location was. <laughs> like Could a second it be, family. Doug? <laughs> Could it be because you play loosey goosey with your fucking coordinates and then you DM me like, Kaya, are you the one sending me photos of my house? I'm scared. Oh, this is Jesus how you get dogs to fucking retard. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was a serious again, DM he sent me. Again, I've still ha I still have the DMs and I promise you I did not say I'm scared. <laughs> I actually bet it was Kaya sending pictures of his house. Yeah, though. that sounds I, like yeah. a Kaya. It was not. Yeah, Kaya would do that. God damn it. Now, we, we recently had a bomb scare at work, and I thought, nah, it, nothing to worry about. It's just Kaya. <laughs> yep. I mean, isn't, isn't Kaya what? the guy who called your boss with, like, a voice modulator and was like, oh, you better not fuck up or something bad will happen? <laughs> Didn't that, that, no, that, no. That was no. That was Carl from WATP. Yes. Completely different oh. person, so fuck you, Andrew. <laughs> okay, I, I don't remember this. This happened, like, three years ago. Yeah, it was, it was a while ago. Yeah. Andrew, why haven't you met up with Doug yet? Uh, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should. Uh, that, would, with. that would that excuse that you would accept be an, Doug, huh? That no, I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm just picturing how somebody like Andrew and somebody like me 
taking a cross country trip, how that would go. I think it would be a sort of Breaking Bad scenario where we're we're just two different worlds. We kind of just, you know, we got things we want in life and we don't see eye to eye. But then towards the end, we got a mutual respect. And then you take a bullet for me and die. Hmm. Yeah. Do you think somewhere be- right before I die that we lock eyes and slowly embrace or anything like that? It would probably be like, as you're dying, I'd stare you in the eyes and I'd be like, Doug, what's the formula to the meth? Because it's like I got my own motives. But like, I, I love and respect you, but I also want to like keep cooking our meth, you know? Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I, it, just so you know, I was getting ready to kill you before you killed oh, me. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah. You you had the and, like and, knife. You had like the suicide note to fake my death. Like and, yeah, and it, it had nothing to do our, with our meth business. It was just for sport. <laughs> it was just fun. You just had some stress. So you'll <laughs> you'll kill random men, but you won't even meet me halfway. <laughs> is what I'm getting. Yeah, he's planning a whole road trip with Andrew. It sounds you, like Kaya. You are such a fucking woman. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the we need you need to go back, Kaya, and meet up with him now. You need to spend a whole week at his place. Yeah. You need to mm-hmm. live well, at his house. It's fucking... No. Oh, ooh, I like that. Yeah, that sounds like, it sounds like ooh. what Doug wants. Yeah, so can, plan your can I should just get you in fucking trouble. I should show up at your house. I should find out where you live because apparently it's fucking easy because you dox yourself on your own show. Show up at your doorstep and when your wife is like, what the fuck is this? I, I'll just tell her, Doug invited me to live with you. He didn't tell you? <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, I'll take the bed. <laughs> yeah, Kaya, Kaya, you're the kind of guy who would do that, and then to really amp it up, you'd be like, I've been having an affair with Doug. Yeah. He's my gay lover. <laughs> Straight to his wife. So you're a Turkish male bride. <laughs> he he a male, male, male bride. me from Turkey. <laughs> he didn't tell you about the green card? <laughs> yeah, but you have to speak really broken English, like really bad English when you get there. Oh, like, Doc, honey, why you no like me now? <laughs> who, who woman? Who why why woman? you no sucky sucky? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All Fucking right. Well, this, is, this is always next year. Yeah. yeah. I think this was very uh, important to get to the root of Kaya's commitment issues. We'll yeah, see no him one again, Charlie. Me. Yeah. See, Jackson, well, this is why I have issues being vulnerable. Charlie, I why wouldn't just, what? worry about it. I'm not worried about it. I understand. Yeah, I mean, we'll go to like a concert in five years and Kyle will be two euros ahead of us. Won't even tell us he's going. It'll be fine. <laughs> how do you think? You, how do you? <laughs> okay. Wearing so, some wearing some shitty disguise so you guys can't find him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of those glasses with, with a big nose. mustache. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I slink away like, oh shit, I owe those guys money. <laughs> I walk out. <laughs> 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 so everyone oh, here saw the Halo uh, TV show I heard. Yes, yes. Duck I watched, some clips. I watched oh. some clips, but I do not care. You can spoil it, talk all about it. I go nuts. Oh, I, d- I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just not good. It's bad. It's not like a whole <laughs> topic. It's just really bad. <laughs> I mean I watched uh I watched the clip Kaya posted. Uh-huh. I have seen it floating in the wild of when he's fighting the Covenant elites and yeah, man, that looks really fucking bad. I don't know how you would even make that look good, though. Really, I, I couldn't well, you just I copy. Know how. I mean, the biggest thing that fucked me up is they did a first-person segment multiple times, and it looked nothing like the games. Couldn't you get that part right? Easily? Well, they didn't play the games, so they took a guess fair. on what it was supposed to look like. Yeah, fair. Well, but to be fair, I also think transcribing a video game format one to one to television wouldn't work either. I think that would look pretty bad it looks more, bad more, anyway though and the yeah, thing no, is my mind is. was blown because jackson told me this while we were watching it for the patreon by the way which uh, you can watch later uh it's a watch along each episode of this turd cost 10 million dollars mm-hmm. yeah it is absolutely mind-blowing and the cgi Why is the money is such hot garbage i don't know it has to be a money laundering scheme I'm curious how much the actors were paid because they don't seem to care either. They're so. Is like, it a um, um, Z-list actors? It. Is it an entirely like CGI show, like actors just in front of blue screens the entire time? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then that can't possibly cost that much if every background is just digital. Jesus Christ, that's and crazy. The props are hot garbage too. Everything just looks like carton and plastic. 
and sometimes they CGI the props too. So there's like a point where the Master Chief throws a gun on the floor, and it's literally yeah. just a gun landing on the ground. But for some reason, they had to CGI they the gun. CGI. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't break their one prop of that gun that he was using in the shot before. It was so dumb. Why? Why wouldn't they just throw it on the ground? So arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. it's fun to watch with a friend, though. I would say it's like a CW show or an yeah. Asylum production. Yeah. So what's the plot? Like, what's the story? Uh, Master Chief gets memories from a little... Uh, device an alien device and then he becomes a good guy but before that he was a bad guy and the unsc the military wait, wait, bad guy i thought he was always a bad or always a good guy not anymore yeah, this, oh this they, plot, they yeah, subverted this my timeline. expectations ah mm -hmm. the old classic neil Druckmann maneuver mm -hmm. and mm. all of the all of the insurrectionists on the first planet they use AK-47s in the year 2552 for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. Classic yeah. design. <laughs> they couldn't... And like, ancient cars. <laughs> yeah, like a Toyota pickup truck in the background. So, so they had the first writing team read the Halo books, and then the other writing team read the Counter-Strike books, and then they came together. <laughs> yeah, this was... It's not... Why... Why... Just call it something else other than Halo. Call it Green Suit Man. <laughs> anything i don't know I why don't know. he takes his mask off too and he's the lamest dude just a random boring looking dude with no personality or anything. yeah i like how he, when he takes off his helmet doug you, you're gonna love this when he takes off his helmet it's just the most basic looking dude but it's done in such a way where it's meant to feel dramatic and stuff but every, everyone's left ca like who cares like everyone watching is like who cares so who is this guy so this isn't earned it was like a big reveal without a big reveal. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It was just like a random guy. It was like the equivalent of someone taking off a mask. Like this badass dude taking off a mask and it's just a random guy under there. It really wasn't. It was more like the equivalent of those video game mascots who stand outside GameStop twirling a sign and you see them take the mask <laughs> off. It's like, yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> He must have gotten yeah. hot. Yeah. yeah. Jackson, you've, the you've read the... Game? Oh, Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, okay. So, no, Jackson, no, you you've... Ahead. You've read the books, right? Like, you're deep on Halo lore mm -hmm. and stuff. So isn't the whole point of Master Chief, you never seeing his face and him keeping the suit on all the time, that he's just so augmented and, like, fucked up that he's barely human now? He's just kind of a robot? No, no. No? No, that's never that's never been a thing. And he, he takes his helmet okay. off a lot in the books and stuff. Okay. It's just the games. Because I thought from playing the games, yeah, he's never supposed to take the helmet off, and when he does, it's supposed to, like, hide his face. And I thought that was, like, one of the cardinal rules of Halo. You don't really humanize Master Chief, you know? But, yeah, no, well, that is one of the cardinal his... rules. He's not really humanized ever, mm -hmm. but... Uh, well, the thing is, is, he is humanized immediately in the show. Within the span of five minutes, he goes from cold machine serial killer, basically, to, oh, I, I have to save the 17-year-old girl now and be her daddy. That's why he mm. takes his mask off, by the way, is, is to gain trust with a fucking 16-year-old who, I don't know why, he can just literally boss her around. He's a fucking Terminator, right? Wait, yeah. what? I don't know what the fuck. That's what that scene was? He was trying to gain, I was thought he was like trying to commit suicide by cop or something because he was holding a rifle at his head what no no yeah he was trying to gain our trust he was like i'm no danger to you here i'll take my mask off and you can see the human behind the mask here's your but it's such a and then dumb she decision. tosses him the gun because she's like okay i guess you're no danger to me and then he gives her the gun back it's like none of this makes sense who gives a shit why does he care all of a sudden about this human and why give her the gun back actually i didn't even consider that Right, that gun would be better in his hands. I don't know why yeah. he's like deputizing a fucking teenage girl. You <laughs> <laughs> can fight the UNSC military. <laughs> I'm gonna drop you off. Yeah, yeah. The whole show is ass. But I was gonna mm -hmm. ask Doug, like, what's what's the last game you've played or cared about or enjoyed? Yeah. Let alone obsessed over, I guess. Uh, I I really enjoyed on the computer. I really enjoyed Door Kickers. I like strategy what? type games. Ooh, I oh, think wow. I know that. Yeah, that's a pretty niche game. Wow, that's yeah. like some actual real gamer shit. So, wait, you're an actual gamer, Doug? No, no, I'm too old for that. Well, you're playing door uh, kickers. You are, okay. <laughs> you are so, old, too old, old but, but you're, you're a gamer. You're a more gamer than most people if you're playing such a niche game. I was playing... Last weekend, I was playing... Oh, fuck. It was some... VR game on the PS4. Uh, it was like 
paranormal <laughs> activity, I think. And I was walking down a hallway and some little girl stepped around the corner or something. And I, I screamed like a 12 year old fucking girl. <laughs> was it, it scared uh, the fuck out was of it me. phasmophobia? I don't think so. Okay. I could look it up if you're that interested, but yeah. That's... And then, uh, there, there was another game I was playing. It's like you're on a roller coaster. It's a shooting game in VR, and uh, it's like blood something, I think. But anyway, mm-hmm. uh, I was going through this track, and there were these pigs jumping out at me, and oh, my heart was racing. And you're on the roller this... coaster? What's that? You're on a roller coaster in that? Yeah. The, the pig one? What is that? That's uh, What's that game? Until Dawn. It's Until Dawn, I think. Yeah, the VR version right. of it. Yeah, and that, that one, cool. one, one of my dogs jumped up on my lap and I about throttled that son of a bitch. It scared the <laughs> shit out of me so fucking bad. <laughs> I, I do have to say, though, so you said you're too old for gamer shit, but a while back, Doug sent me, um, what is it called? A wish list, I guess. He was like, he sent me this link, an Amazon wish list. And he asked, <laughs> Kaya, would it be scummy to like advertise this wish list? And I looked at it and it was like Lego sets and the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> no, so when I when you I said I'm too be old a gamer. to be when when he asked me if I was a gamer and I said I'm too old for that shit. I, I don't consider myself a gamer, but I love video games. So you think I gamer I, as like hmm. a like a mindset or like a group of people instead of just like no? I think I think it's based on skill level. Like uh, I, I'm not mm. I'm not good at anything uh, that I play. I just enjoy playing it. Okay, so, I, I understand that. Yeah, you're like that. a games yeah. journalist then. You're in the games yeah. journalist category of gamer then. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> the mind yeah. freak you can, soundtrack in the background. You, you can make a really lucrative career reviewing these games, Doug, while barely being able to play them. Just sign up for like IGN or any of those websites. You'll make Your a fuck lot of money. So I, I took a uh, Raspberry Pi and then I put retro pie on it you know and then downloaded all the old uh 16-bit games and shit mm-hmm. and then i built a arcade cabinet dude so, you're a gamer so, you're a gamer stop yeah. it yeah. stop it you're a gamer that's the nerdiest well, fucking thing i've heard yeah. on this show for sure. <laughs> one i know that i know for sure that is not the case <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> okay maybe not <laughs> but it is still two, pretty dorky what the fuck is dorky about it? Just because you're not capable of building something? <laughs> wow. You don't have to be mean about this. I'm just saying, like, making your own arcade video game cabinet is kind of gamery. Uh, okay, that that's fine. I'll say that I am a 16-bit gamer. I have I have skills on Excite Bike. I could fuck you up in Super Mario Brothers. Holy I mean, shit. I, 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 this guy I says 16-bit gamer and Excite Bike is a fucking 8-bit game. Wow. How embarrassing. <laughs> Oh my lord! Wow. Have you ever, have you, hey, have you ever played Super Mario Brothers or Excite Bike on Super Nintendo? Uh, no, I played it on Shut NES. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> they're on NES. They're not Super Nintendo, and, and they're also on, and they're also on Super Nintendo. Oh, did they Super upgrade Excite Bike? Uh, I think it's called Super Excite Bike. Oh, uh, that would make sense. Yeah, that's the era. So that. they upgraded to sixteen bit. Super everything, yeah, and then sixty four was when they called everything blank sixty four. Anyone remembers that? What, yeah. No, what, 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 wait, what's blank 64? So blank is in, there's a meant to be another word. Mario 64. N- yeah, oh, Nintendo oh, used to mean. have those weird naming conventions where they'd put the name of the console in the game title. Yeah. So Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, uh, Star Fox 64. I thought, you meant it was the next, I thought you meant it was the next graphical thing, like 16-bit became something. Well, that's what it was like named that. for, because I think the idea was they went from 32 to 64-bit when they went to 3D. No, yeah, that would make sense. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nintendo's always done that. Like, someone just mm-hmm. in chat said, like, m- most DS games also had that. Uh, yeah. True. Very true. They don't do it anymore. They don't go, like, this is Mario Switch. Not true. What about one two switch? We remember that that also follows that. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, that's about it there. Oh well. So maybe I was thinking of a different game, Doug. You might you might be a better gamer than I am, Doug. You know your stuff. No, I, I think you were more accurate than I was. I think I might have misspoke and then tried covering it up with a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we do that a lot on this show. Oh man. Well here, you let know, me um <laughs> your VR games scare you though. You might want to try some CBD, Doug. You sound like a little too anxious. You need to chill out yeah. all the time. 
Yeah, relax let me, a little. Let me talk about something at Doug or to Doug, depending on how interested he is, and to the listeners. But it's something that I hope to never misspeak on because it's Caliper CBD. I mean, are you stressed? You want to look for some calmness? Maybe you got a little pain, a little soreness. Would you like something to help with that? Well, I recommend CBD. Look, there's a million studies out there. A million studies out there about the benefits of cannabis. It's, it's all sorts of nice benefits for stuff. You ever watch those videos of those people that try it and they have like muscle disorders and then all of a sudden they're fine? They're not like having spasms or tics or like any of that stuff. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to try CBD, maybe see what it does for you. It's different for everybody, but see how if it helps you, if you like it. Caliper is a good place to go because Caliper CBD is always THC free meaning that you'll get to experience the benefits without trippy side effects. You're going to get exactly 20 milligrams per packet, and it's clinically proven to deliver 30 times more CBD in the first 30 minutes than a CBD oil, because you're going to be mixing this into a drink or sprinkle it on your food, however you want to take it. It's up to you. But you can go ahead and take it and try it and see how it works out for you because the dissolvable powder has no flavor whatsoever, meaning it's going to go with everything. Put it in there. Super easy to take. Convenient. You can get flavorless with Caliper CBD, and you can get 20% off your first order with promo code OP at trycaliper.com slash OP. You can try it risk-free for 30 days. If you don't love it, you'll get a full refund. Trycaliper.com slash OP. Don't forget promo code OP for 20% off your first order. I used to suffer from uh, migraines. I've talked about them on the podcast, and CBD helped a lot during that time period. Thankfully, I learned coping mechanisms and ways to repeat the mantra, those children don't know you, you're very funny. So I don't need it anymore. But if you maybe want to try it out there, Caliper CBD, Caliper, sorry, trycaliper.com slash OP. I'm mixing all my words together. I'm just so excited to talk about them. But with the CBD, I'm just calm and relaxed. And when I'm in this meditative state, when I'm flying through the fifth dimension, opening my eye to the universe, I can see in front of me more savings, more savings, <laughs> more coupons, more ways to save money, and a voice speaking in a dialect regional accent from beyond the cosmos just appears in my ear and says, honey. And I say, what? You have to speak up. I'm so calm. And it says, use honey. And I say, oh, good. Thank you for telling me about that. Because honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one to your cart. I use honey all the time. I don't know how to describe to you the amount of convenience that honey has just sitting in the corner of my browser. I buy cables constantly because I'm constantly hooking up new electronics and losing cables and like cables go bad. And I go, ah, USB-C cables. These are still sort of expensive. That sucks. Oh, wait, Honey says I save $5, $8, and I do nothing? Yeah, I'm in. Works for me. Works for a lot of things. Works on a lot of websites. In fact, 30,000 stores online take Honey. And you don't have to do anything. All four official boys use Honey. In fact, I'll bet Doug right now is slapping Honey on every one of his computers because he just can't resist the siren's call. If you don't already have honey, pie. yeah, he's putting it on his retro pie so he can get discounted <laughs> free games. If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the podcast. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. Joinhoney.com slash official. It's free. So like do it. What do you have to lose? Oh, don't tell me. Don't No, no, don't tell me. You're sitting there thinking all the things you could lose right now. Oh, my God. What's first on your list? I can hear you through the through the magic of audio. I, go ahead. Oh, pubic hair? I, I, I can tell. Yeah, I want to lose yeah, my pubes. Yeah, I read your mind. I read your mind, Kaya. The first thing you want to lose hair. is your pubic hair. Because no one likes pubic hair. Have you seen it? It's all curly and it gets itchy sometimes. Sticky. And if you, it's icky. And like if you pick up a girl from the bar and she's like, I can't wait to suck your penis. And then she pulls your pants down <laughs> and you have like a bush that looks like the top of a man's head. It's like, you don't want that. Yeah, Doug. Plus it makes your dick look smaller. <laughs> don't do it that. It does. 
Get rid of those bigger. pubes. Get a longer pee pee. There's a million and one reasons to clean up down there, and you can do it with Manscaped. Look, Manscaped now has the Performance Package 4.0. You like their little pun? Package. Like what you got downstairs. And in that package, <laughs> you're going to find the Lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer designed for loose skin. The advanced skin safe technology that'll reduce nicks and cuts on your balls. It's going to have a 4,000K LED spotlight. Shine a light on the promised land. Jesus. You're also going to have <clears throat> me clearing my throat because I would hate to get Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver stuck in it. It's not for drinking. Don't drink it. But put it all over your genitals because it's going to help <laughs> you clean up and keep clean down there. Also, in that little performance package, you're going to get a free set of anti-chafing boxer briefs. So what if you've just cleaned up all your fucking nethers... And then you say, oh boy, I would hate to chafe in this moment, but I have to go out to the store and run into my friend from Turkey who didn't tell me he was coming. Oh my well, God. Well, now you can do it without having any irritation based on the underwear that you choose. Also, premium body wash also comes with a travel bag. Why have you not ordered this for your penis and balls yet? Get 20% <laughs> off and free shipping. Good Lord. I'm going to take a real quick sip because my throat is so dry. You can use it on woman pubes as well, right, Andrew? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Might be called Manscaped, but figure it out. <clears throat> Good Lord. Manscaped. There we go. Get 20% off and free shipping with your code official at manscaped.com. I'm calling it your code because it's going to be yours forever. I'm giving you permission to take this code, code official, and just send it into that website. 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Code official. New year, no pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. Check out the performance package and get 20% off with code official. Good Thank stuff. you, Andrew, for the ad segment. Yes. Yes. That's did me. you enjoy that, so Doug? I, I, I did. I, I loved it. So I've got oh. a couple questions regarding your, your sponsors. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so with Honey, is there is there any good reason why somebody would choose not to use it? legitimately no. no i don't think i mean isn't it the equivalent of walking around with somebody at a store that works there and they give you the employee discount yeah, for everything pretty much. You go? yeah the only reason you wouldn't have it i guess is if you hate having money <laughs> like if you just if you want to speed run bankrupt bankruptcy i guess that would be the strategy but yeah no if you if you even remotely like saving your money honey is the way to do it for sure mm -hmm. doug Thanks for the alley oop there, man. I like it. <laughs> so, so the the second ad read, I think it was, or first one, the CBD. <laughs> we don't have to uh, do this if you don't want to. <laughs> have, have Have any of you guys ever smoked weed? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What What did it do to you? Because I'm not a big fan of of weed. Neither because the same. Mm -hmm. I used I to be, in, and then um, I fell out of it. I did it in Amsterdam and they, I, I guess it was, it's the THC that makes you, that has the, like the, um, the weed stuff in it. <laughs> yeah. That makes you actually get fucked up and high. Right. So yeah, that was a lot of fun actually. Aspect. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was a lot of fun. Um, but definitely not something I would do all the time for sure. I really hate <laughs> weed culture and I hate for a while. Weed do you guys remember when worst. it is? And for a while when it was still like, um, on the brink of being legalized, but not quite yet in America, the online culture around weed was insufferable because they actually were treating it like a miracle drug that cures cancer and has absolutely no downsides ever. But then you look at everybody who just continuously smokes weed and you're like, your life is a mess. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you remember that, Do you remember early Reddit? I think it was our trees. Yeah. Every single oh, day, yes. oh, every single yeah. fucking day, they would pump some absolute nonsense to the front page as desperately as possible. They, do they still do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's still mm. massive. Like, it was just completely fake stories about how weed had, like, brought back their dead relatives and <laughs> made them taller or something. Like, it was all kinds of wildness, and they used to just pump the shit out of it. Yeah, that was it's insufferable. Like, why don't we see anyone making alcohol their whole, like, personality like that? We don't see anyone... Oh, we, 
We do. Yeah, that's what a wino is. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Well, they don't like. They're not proud about it. They're never proud about it. They're, 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 there's not subreddits dedicated to speaking about how alcohol is actually a good uh, thing. There Ian absolutely Jackson, is. B well, Jackson, I, 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 I would yeah, say, I want to step in because not only are there alcohols proud or subreddits proud of alcoholism, there's meth and crack subreddits where they talk about how great really? it is to smoke crack. Well, <laughs> I've never seen some this. Wild folk, what the hell? Yeah. I, I was gonna say that alcohol is nowhere near as like harmless as weed, but I guess I got just debunked if people are bragging about their meth addictions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to uh oh, yeah, go I'm, to I'm, I'm not equating. meth. And there's plenty I of think, people. Like a lot of it is wait, about rehab, but there's also people posting they're like, Oh, I'm gonna smoke again. This is awesome. Let's go. Just just for clarification, like I, I do think alcoholism is far worse than being dependent on weed. I think the effects are far worse. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I can't yeah. imagine taking a stance other than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same. But meth? Is it just a bunch of like rich people doing <laughs> coke at work? Like what is it? I, I'm on the subreddit Who right now. I don't know. This shit? I don't know. It's just like the top post right now is just a picture of like a like a crack pipe or something. Yeah. They're like, this looks good. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> just That's people sad. hanging out being like, yeah, I smoke meth too. Isn't it great? <laughs> yeah. What, how's Speaking that, of uh, how's it allowed on Reddit? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. That's also a good question. You get banned for everything on there, but you can brag about like hard drug ad addiction. Um, I was gonna say though, so in, when I was in that city near you, Doug, I, I, um, the person I met has a little teenage sister and her friends, so I was like, just getting out of the bathroom, and one of her teenage friends came up to me with a vape, and he was like, do you want a hit? And I was like, what is it? And he, he goes, it's nicotine. And I was like, no, thanks. Like, it's like, this is not, I'm an adult. Like, this is not some exotic drug that you're offering me. <laughs> but I was very amused by the offer. If he had a said meth, Kyle would have been straight in there, though. Oh, Kyle loves meth. Oh, for sure. It's all he talks yeah. about now. Snapping selfies on Reddit, yeah. Yeah, he's on r slash meth every day, getting the top posts. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should see his pipe collection, Andrew. Guys, it's, it's insane. Also, I have to oh, say, yeah. you guys, I've heard you guys also have the weirdest laws regarding liquor in, um, I guess, red states. I don't know, but I remember we were at uh, Walmart. We were getting ingredients for chili. I made a gigantic pot of chili for like seven people, and we had like four teenagers in town. So I was like ordering the. So I was saying, get me a bottle of vodka, and then I was told that you guys don't sell liquor in Walmart, but you do sell beer. And I was utterly confused, like, why would you sell one kind of alcohol but not another? And apparently some religious law thing, mm -hmm. where you have to I, go to I, a specific know, liquor store? When I when what? I lived in North Carolina, there was, uh, it was called ABC Liquors, mm -hmm. and it was the al alcohol yeah. bureau or whatever. And so you could buy <laughs> beer and wine at grocery stores and Walmart, but anything else you had to go to the state sponsored liquor stores. Yeah. Why? Actually, why that's that? kind of the what same over here. Yeah. Uh, actually. Yeah. Beer, beer. I've noticed beer is available at grocery stores or supermarkets, but spirits aren't. And I thought that was just because the grocery stores owned the liquor markets or the liquor stores. So they, they, they didn't need to like put liquor or spirits in the grocery stores but i wonder if it's a legal thing like i think it is a legal thing because with Publix, the biggest grocery store here and the one like we go ape shit over they have all of their liquor in a separate building yeah. so they'll have yeah. like the grocery store yeah, and yeah. then right next to it they'll have Publix liquors and it's an entirely yeah, yeah, yeah. different it establishment be, it's the same here yeah it has to be a legal thing but i'm just asking why because you can ju get just as fucked up on seltzers like it, you just need more of it. Well, it's, it it's weird because still, you can just walk, like Andrew just said, you can just walk 15 meters to the next door and then buy it there. Right. And then, so I was told, I don't know if this is accurate, I was told it's like a religious thing. But then we went to the liquor store and the guy who runs the store was wearing a gigantic cross around his neck. So I was like, mm -hmm. so if I buy this vodka at Walmart, it's sinful, but here it's endorsed by Jesus. Like, how does this make fucking sense? It's just it a weird. lot of weird, like, laws that kept getting clashed into each other so for example dry counties never makes fucking sense to me where they're like oh we won't sell alcohol on sunday 
And it's like, why? Well, Wait, why? Because it's a Wasn't church Jesus day. like a giant alcoholic anyway? Like well, he it just, was doing it's, shit with wine. It's so convoluted because it's like, we won't sell it on Sunday because it's a church day. We don't want you drinking on Sunday. And it's like, well, what if I just buy it on Saturday and then drink it on Sunday? Like, well, there, there's, there's still okay. a, lot of, a lot of counties in the United States that are dry counties where you can't buy alcohol at all. Yeah. It's illegal to sell it. Yeah. Really? And then there's some that kind of go like halfway where they go, oh, we don't sell it after 7 p.m. or something. And it, it, it's just strange. It's like people are going to get their alcohol. You can't really stop them. This stuff doesn't really prevent people from doing it except people who can't think more than five minutes ahead. You know? America already tried to stop uh alcohol from being sold right the prohibition we did and it went terribly <laughs> yeah yeah it didn't work i Not actually had some genuine moonshine while it was over there too um it, yeah because isn't that somebody shit had intense? taken up the it tasted good it was good yeah it was in a tiny jar that um a family friend of theirs had made and apparently it was like a family tradition ever since prohibition in the 30s oh. so mm, that was that's awesome. cool i didn't mean to what, derail what is... all this though doug why did you ask about weed or if we have done it. Yeah, you cop. Oh, so, so so I was just, I was thinking back as he was doing that ad, I was thinking back, I was at a bar and I, I was drunk before I went out in the parking lot and smoked and then ended up back inside the bar. And I was so fucking paranoid. Mm. I used to fight a little bit. And <laughs> I can remember <laughs> a, lo looking across the bar, right? There, there is zero chance that this guy even knew I existed. And, and with the music and everybody hollering, there is zero chance that we could talk to each other. But I very clearly remember him looking over across 100 people and looking at me specifically and saying, I am going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Little do you don't know, Doug, that he paid the DJ and at that exact moment the music went off and he did say it. <laughs> so, so I, did I, I leaned over to my buddy and I said that, you know, whatever that guy wants to fight or that guy, me and that guy are going to fight. And my buddy's like, what, when the fuck is wrong with you, man? Every time you go out, you end up wanting to fight somebody. Well, no, this guy's starting it. So I, I go over and <laughs> you're a nut job. You're a, it, it, you're it, a danger to society back then. I was such an <laughs> asshole. Like I, I, there's so many, there's so many stories I have about altercations that I've been in. And had I told you the same story 10 years ago, it would have been, I don't know why this shit always happened to me. And now that I've had time to reflect, it's like, I was just a fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> we, so did me you and end a buddy up fighting mine, him? So oh, it turned ahead. into a, a pretty good sized bar fight, but I didn't throw one punch and he didn't, he didn't throw one punch, but everybody else just kind of started going at it after the altercation. <laughs> Um, what but, was the altercation if you didn't throw any punches? They just stared at each other, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, they're they're freaking out. <laughs> I, went, I went up and started talking shit and wanted to know why he wanted to fight. And then he <laughs> had no idea what the fuck I was talking about. And then his, his buddy pushed me and then my buddy hit his buddy. And then they started going at it. And I just kind of dipped out the back. <laughs> yeah, you grabbed the guy's hand and you were like, let's get out of here. <laughs> Our diversion worked. Let's go make out. <laughs> so me and that, that me and that that same buddy used to go to bars and w so we would leave the bars that we enjoyed going to and and driving through downtown with some shithole uh like hole in the wall type bars and <laughs> we we had this thing we called bar olympics so for instance it could be different events for the night if it could be fighting it could be fucking uh, we had something we, we called hogging, which is to see who can stick their finger in the fattest woman. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, there was this time where we had walked into a bar, and uh, right before we'd walked in, we played rock, paper, scissors to see who was going to be the competitor and who was going to come up with the event. And he ended up winning, which means that he won the rock, paper, scissors, so I got to tell him who to punch. Because supposedly we enjoyed punching people, whatever. Anyway, so we walk in the bar and there's this poor fucking guy sitting at the end of the bar by himself drinking a fucking bottle of beer. I walk in and tell my buddy Jason, I said, well, that's the guy right there. So the guy's in the middle of taking a drink at the bar by himself, minding his own fucking business. And Jason walks up and goes to punch him in the chin and he just barely fucking nicks him. <laughs> so the guy stood up grabbed Jason and like 
I'd say he threw him a good 20 feet. It seemed like, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a fucking launch. Um, and then the bouncers came and escorted us out of the building. And then we proceeded to, uh, run our hands into their, run our heads into their hands out in the parking lot. <laughs> good. You deserved it. <laughs> yeah, very much. Yeah, you no, did deserve that. Every time that I've gotten my ass kicked, almost every time that I've gotten my ass kicked, I've deserved it. I, I know that now. I, I know that I was an asshole. Yeah. Was there ever a time where it was a justified beating that you doled out? Oh, that, that I doled out, yes. All of them that I won, I... I were justified. <laughs> <laughs> All three of them, but the other 90, no way. <laughs> so did no, you it, still it, have it, a good record going on? I know that I have a higher higher win than loss. Oh. I know that for, for okay. sure. Why don't you just nice. go become like okay. an MMA fighter or something? Just go actually channel it into something good instead of going and picking, like, randomly coward punching some guy at the end of the bar. Like, what was your thought process? Just because you enjoyed it? I think, okay, so as I've gotten older, and this isn't going to be funny or insightful or anything, it's just, I think there, I was fueled by depression and insecurity. Hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. That, that's, in, <laughs> yeah. that's insightful to that, a degree. That was pretty honest, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you were a typical bar patron, right? Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was unhappy with where my life was. I was unhappy with the choices that I made, and I wanted to make other people as miserable as I was. How... Hmm. So you went One around fingering sandwich super fat time. women? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that was just for fun. I mean, I enjoyed getting my fingers wet, but we had to make it funny by <laughs> picking the, the fattest woman in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. <laughs> this is some classic, classic bar pranks right here. Oh, man. I feel like it would have been popular on TikTok if it existed in the day. Going around just fighting random people. I feel like you would have been an IRL streamer. You would have been one of those assholes. Just picking issues with random pedestrians. I'm just imagining that guy at the bar, though. He's just like... I don't know, he's just gone back from work. He found his girlfriend cheating on him at home, so he's just driven to his, like, favorite bar or something. He's sitting down at the end of the table, just minding his own business, drinking his own beer, trying to forget his worries. And then fucking fat-ass Doug comes up and barely scrapes his chin. And then... It, See, or, now, now all, all this tells me is you didn't listen to the fucking... No, story. I know it wasn't you, <laughs> but you were there. So I'm, I'm combining the two of you, you and your friend together. Yeah, you don't and, act like and, you didn't ever do it. <laughs> that, that, that's that's not important. <laughs> <laughs> so what what was like the limits of the game? Like, what if you rolled out in that game and you found like some fucking seventeen year old kid who snuck in? Would you have to just clock him in the face? <laughs> so I I guess I'm trying to think back of my mind state in that time, and I I. In all honesty, I don't know if it would have mattered. <laughs> uh, so, so walking Jesus. in, you have a very limited time to pick the other person. It's not like you get to walk up and ask them how old they are and how they got into the bar. It's just <laughs> and you if see like somebody, to be punched, and, and, yeah. And and ideally, you're you're trying to find somebody that should be able to whoop your buddy's ass. You know, you're not mm. you're not picking the smallest person, or you're not picking a female. Nothing like that. It was something to make the night fun, basically. Okay. <laughs> You guys just you just got, you guys just wanted to get beat. You guys had a fetish for getting damaged. Uh, <laughs> so how did how did you change your life? I'm assuming the first thing was to get rid of that friend. That, that fucking piece well, let's, of shit. Let's clear the air had. here, Doug. That friend is Anthony, isn't it? <laughs> he he has never thrown a fucking punch in his life, that puss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure one of you guys have gotten into a fist fight before, right? I've well, broken yeah, like, or like tried to break them up before. I've never been like in the mm. center of the fight, though. I've only been in one only in in fifth like grade. School. That was it. So, yeah, just school fights. Yeah, That's just school kid fights. I used to see a lot of cool fights at bars, though. Like I used to see some really fucking wild ones. There was one where a dude got, like, Goldberg speared into the support beam of the, like, bar's <laughs> overhang and busted right through it. And then the bouncers got confused on what was happening, so they started, like, hitting each other around it. <laughs> so it just got real sloppy. <laughs> the bouncers started fighting each other? Yeah, things got really wild. <laughs> <laughs> 
That actually sounds fun. No, me wait, neither. Wait, wait, wait. Like in high school for like dumb kid stuff, I guess. But that's about it. And I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I'm happy. I never fucking. Because, like, you see those videos that basically scare you straight on, like, Reddit. You know, those fighting subreddits or whatever the fuck they're called. Um, where you see, like, a video of a guy. He he amps himself up like a little chihuahua. And then the bouncer or some other drunk punches him once in the head. And he smashes his head on the pavement. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. yeah. It's just never worth it. You never know what the other guy is, like, holding or capable of. They could have a yeah. knife or a gun or some it's- shit genuinely never worth it and even if you win the fight you could kill the person and then you're fine yeah exactly because because that's the thing like walking away punches walking away the incident is over 99 percent of the time like if something happens and you just walk away or like dissolve it it's done but what is winning the fight even get you yeah you'll maybe feel good you won but you could hurt somebody or god knows like i don't know cause some other damage break something it's not worth it it doesn't get you anything also, I will say, I, it's also never worth to try and break up a fight that you're not in, because <laughs> then you just get blasted. Yeah. Yeah. When I've tried, I didn't really get like hurt going for it. I just would, you know, it wouldn't be comfortable. But one of my friends, he was very drunk and he was trying to get into a party we were at, but he was being reckless. So he got attacked by like six different dudes. And then another friend of mine, like, he was on the ground getting, like, stomped on. So another friend of mine, like, goes over him and cradles him like a baby and just starts getting absolutely annihilated by, like, eight other dudes who then just start hitting my friend who's coddling the other guy on the ground. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking nuts. So, wait, is that the fight that you interjected yourself no, into? No, I, I, I was at that party. That was a friend's place. I wasn't gonna even, I wasn't, I wasn't choosing sides. I, I was just going to let that ride. And there's no chance I'm going up against, like, eight guys to try and save one friend. It's like a sacrifice <laughs> I gotta make. He brought it on himself, too, so. What if someone was beating your ass? Would you want your friends to step in and help out? I, my friend threw the first punch. Like, it was his fault. <laughs> no, I know, in that situation, but I'm saying just hypothetically, in another situation, if you were getting your ass beat just randomly, you'd want some help, wouldn't you? You would You would want your friends to Oh, my God, yeah, I'd want you guys to get your ass beat, too, so I don't feel alone. <laughs> Charlie doesn't want uh, help. He wants Charlie. meat shields to take all the blows. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Charlie, you would have been a shitty competitor in Bar Olympics. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. <laughs> So, Charlie, what was that situation where you did interject then? It was like a lot more like slap fighty. So like the at least the most recent one I can remember, it was at the same bar where the guy got speared through a post. I was actually out with Caleb, who I know, Andrew, you know yeah. very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were at the bar and we were with like a group of his friends I didn't know super well. And they got physical with some group of strangers, but they never really started throwing punches. It was a lot of shoving and then like actual slapping. And I was like, okay, I feel confident enough that if I interject here, I won't get hurt. So I would just start. So like, did you step in? They stop punching it's you. Because you watch all those no, slap no, no, no. tournaments. I just started like I just started like stiff arming people away from each other. I was like, all right, come on, Caleb, we got this. Yeah, you watch all those slapping tournaments. So you're like, this is my field. I can stop this. I know their yeah, technique. It's sloppy. Oh, is this recent? Yeah, this is weak. This, this, is weak. this wasn't recent, yeah. was it? No, I stopped drinking like three years ago. This was probably close to like five-ish, four or five years ago. Oh, wow. That's still more recent than I thought it would be. I thought you were talking college days. No, I did try and break up one other in college that was unsuccessful. So I I give myself a lot more credit than I deserve. But basically, it was (laughs) another one of these like house party fights. And I I think it was like at a beer pong table, if I remember correctly. I just like kind of tried to like push my friend away from the other guy and then when he went back I didn't try again I was like all right I did my best (laughs) (laughs) I've done all I can do (laughs) so you kind of like assess the situation from the sidelines first to see what kind of like damage they're dealing I crunch crunch numbers yeah it's like (laughs) I'm weighing risks right now it's like how big is that guy how angry are they am I gonna get myself hurt so, yeah. I still, even in that situation, I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't even consider it because all it takes is someone like, like Andrew said, pulling a knife or having a gun on them or something. And yeah, mm-hmm. like shit can change within like seconds. All it well, takes it is like, like over there. one lunatic. This is why I'm like yeah, one dog. Uh, ardently against bullying too, because you never know if that one nerd that you're like bullying is one swirly away from coming to school the next day with a gun and shooting you in the fucking head. Like, it's just not worth the risk. Stop it. Mm hmm. I mean, even stop, even Doug? without uh, even without circumstances, just it can end so poorly. Like you can get into a fight, 
and they just push you wrong and you land and smash your head in the wrong way it's just it's never worth it so yeah, many 100%. stories over here of someone just going up to someone random and punching them in the back of the head and they die like immediately as yeah. soon as they hit the floor it, it doesn't have to be they have a gun or a knife or they know how to fight it could just you're in a fight like anything could happen it's not worth it Sucks. Yeah, i had a buddy of mine he got he got jumped walking out of a bar uh they blindsided him hit him in the head he he went down and hit his head on the curb got a subdermal hematoma good lord and yeah, he, he has never been the same he should have he should have bobbed and weaved or something <laughs> yeah that, that that was probably the issue yeah does he do the <laughs> special bar olympics now what, what's is he okay <laughs> no no he is he is the opposite of okay he is not the same person um, what kind of difference does that make to a person uh i'm trying to keep my words you know clean enough for your show so you don't have to yeah. take anything out but it turned him retarded how's that yeah, yeah, yeah we've got Kyle like, on the show. We've heard that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you stop? I think that was Andrew's question. Mm -hmm. Oh well, that lifestyle. A lot of it stopped when I quit drinking. You know, I, when 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 I would get drunk, I just wasn't smart enough to stop drinking. So I would drink myself stupid and then find myself in all these different situations. Even as I was older. Um, so really just when I quit drinking and quit doing Coke and all that shit, it, I didn't find myself in those situations any longer. Stop posting to r slash crack. Right. <laughs> he stopped getting the top of all time. So he wanted revenge. <laughs> Which all drugs so did you do? Coke and alcohol? Uh, well, weed, Coke. And weed, I guess. Tried meth. Um acid how is meth i've heard good things <laughs> i disagree wholeheartedly oh. so we our, our dealer that we were getting our coke from didn't have any but she said that she had some some meth that we could snort to get our because all, all we were wanting to do is something to help us stay up and drink longer basically uh, and it was it was if you can imagine taking a car window and breaking it into small pieces and then shoving it up your nose that's what it was like and then being forced to stay awake for a day or two it was fucking horrible. <laughs> God damn. So, no. well, what's the upside then? Why do people do it if it's not enjoyable at all? You just said. Yeah, so just so you get to, up. you get to drink as much alcohol as you can possibly get into your system without feeling the the negative effects of being completely fucking blasted. Like in in your oh, brain, okay. you're still sober. <laughs> That God damn! Awful. But you're also on meth. That yeah. sounds awesome, actually. I might try that. <laughs> yeah, you really sold it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You should so post you, that to our meth. You'd get top, like all immediate front page. There's also the upside of that that same uh, occurrence of finally passing out and waking up covered in vomit and piss. That's cool. <laughs> is, is that an upside? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> that sounds all right. Yeah. What if you really had to piss? get it out that's an alcohol thing as well though so what what i think is extremely interesting about my life and some of the shit i've been in is as kaya was talking about my my business meeting that i flaked on him for i had to get up and present to the board of directors for our corporation and i use a lot of big words in my slides and and i can speak pretty intelligently about my subject matter and i always find myself when i'm preparing my presentations thinking about all these situations I found myself in and how in the fuck did I end up here? You know, I was supposed to be either dead or in prison or something with the way I was behaving. And now I'm presenting to the fucking board of directors. It's insane. Well, that's something yeah, to be proud gonna say, of, isn't it? That's what I was going to ask. For. Yeah, it absolutely is something to be proud of. If you've like changed your ways that significantly. Yeah. You noticed it was, a, it was a bad path you were on and you corrected it. And yeah. that's worth something, I think. Does, I still, does it negate does it negate all the bullshit behavior of punching innocent civilians? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> nah, no. Do you think well, that maybe there mistakes. was like one very prominent instance where your ass got beat so hard it changed something in your brain's chemistry? And like maybe you have someone mm. specifically to thank for it. Or was it just like a gradual thing? Did you get beat no, right? I, 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 I would say it was a gradual thing. Okay, so I know that one of the things that I was 
that helped me is that when I was really, really angry and I was in that fight mode or whatever, I, I couldn't feel a punch. Like I would get cracked in the head and it did not phase me. I thought that it was just some kind of superhuman, you know, I, I got hit with a, of course, pool cue. Uh, You're a comic occasion. book I, character, yeah. I, I got hit with a cue ball in the temple. I got hit with a shovel. I got hit with uh, chip, uh, fucking brass knuckles, any, a baseball bat. You know, I, I've been through some shit. And and the only thing that, like the, the shovel almost knocked me down. Like, it, I was really good. One of the <laughs> most recent, one of the most recent fights I got into the guy punched me and I said, what I, what I intended on saying was, is that all you got? And I only made it to, is that all? And then he punched me again and it turned my lights out. Like I was, <laughs> it hurt so fucking bad. <laughs> I guess it wasn't all he, he got. punched no. the pain so, back yeah, into no, you. <laughs> no, it turns out he had plenty more. <laughs> that, that was a, uh, wow. Probably a big wake up call because I realized in that moment that I don't like the way that this feels. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think that this is going to like go the other way and catch up to haunt you? Like you'll be doing another presentation for the board of directors and one guy's going to stand up and go, that's the guy who punched me at the bar. <laughs> that, that motherfucker. That so stop beating bad. you up. Yeah. <laughs> All of them are connected or, or, to you somehow, everyone in the meeting. Everyone or even was. worse, he he gets up to go to the bathroom in the middle of my presentation and then rushes me and clocks me in the fucking jaw. Yeah, no choo-choo yeah. train noises or anything, just does it. <laughs> so. so, what you're saying, though, is that you got punched so hard that it scared you into a better life. That's not the answer I was hoping for, honestly. I was hoping you made the conscious, like recognition that what you were doing was wrong and it wasn't just born out of being like scared of the of <laughs> pain i think so, it could be a combination of the both it's probably more of being scared of the pain than deciding that i was going to be a better person because it didn't dawn on me till sometime after that that impact of his fist hitting my fucking face uh, how big of an asshole I was in the past. So it's it's not like I made a conscious decision. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I just yeah, don't like right. getting punched anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you could still like take a punch though? Like when was when was the last time you got into a fight? Yeah, it's been a couple years. Is that like more than five? More than ten? Oh, I, I would say probably five. Okay, so pretty. It's been pretty. That's recent. recent. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So here, here's, I truly believe this, and, and you have to understand that as you get older, your brain is going to play tricks on you as well. I believe that I could have a good 30 to 60 second fight with somebody before I gassed out and then just fell over. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know that if I was, to, and I mean no disrespect, I know that if I was to, to be able to get a hold of one of you and get one good punch in, I would stand a chance. But other than that, I would put my money on any one of you guys if we were to fight just because I am so low energy. I'm so slow now. And what if I'm you questioning didn't before? <laughs> then I would just have a fucking heart attack. For like a like a strength buff yeah. and dies. <laughs> like <Yeah>. like Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> His veins burst and then he just collapses. Uh, you go to a, a bar a hard... and you're about to start a fight and you go, wait, 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 hang on. You just pull out your meth pipe and all your meth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a hard thing to wrap your head around when you get older to think that you you spent the majority of your life being an asshole, and now the one thing that you were good at, you can't do anymore. <laughs> well, no, wait. Wait. It sounds like you're good at your job. You've been killing that, apparently. He yeah, doesn't like his job, as, though. Yeah, it's, it's not nearly as fun. You can maybe like start your own me. corporate fight club, though. Like, maybe you could... Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 why don't you just... Room, rip your why shirt don't off? you start... Why don't so, you start like a little amateur boxing league or something, like an amateur MMA ring? Okay, well, I'll tell you how that ended for me because I've already had that experience. So me and uh, I would say there was probably 15 or 20 of us that would get together once a month or so. And, and we had a little thing set up in the backyard where we were, I think we convinced ourselves we were practicing, but it, it was basically just challenge somebody and then just beat the shit out of them. <laughs> and this guy showed up. I still remember his name. His name is KT. 
uh, he was a friend of a friend and he had, he had heard some things about me and he, he thought that he wanted to take a shot at my title, so to speak. No, we didn't have belts and it wasn't like backyard wrestling. It was, that's just a phrase anyway. So I put my beer down and went in into the area with him that we were going to fight. Come to find out that this motherfucker was a professional tie fighter. And he later went on to become special forces. He kicked my ass so fucking bad. Like he, he was like a fucking a little brown spider monkey, man. He just climbed up me and he kneed me right in the fucking chin. Like he grabbed the back of my head, like, you know, blood sport type shit. Drove his knee right into my fucking chin. And I just it was like a big fat fucking tree falling over on my back, just staring up at the fucking sky. This That's is shockingly sucker. similar to Mr. Sark's story. Yeah, I was it gonna is, say, yeah. yeah. We had there was, a, a, there was a guest that we had on, Doug, named Mr. Sark, and he had a very similar story of like fighting. He ha- he ran like an underground fight uh, group, and he and the day he quit, I believe, right, Andrew? It was the day he quit was when he got beat so bad. Yeah, and it was by he, a, he by just... a Thai kickboxer who need him. Yeah, oh, in it was the head, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah. What's yeah. that with Thai he... boxers just fighting He's... untrained people? They sound like assholes. I, if I was fucking trained, I would go to these amateur leagues just to practice and have fun. Are you kidding? Of course. Level up your KD ratio. Yeah, yeah, I need to so, pad my stats. So it, it was, I would say it was probably a year after that. Him and I found ourselves that we were going to bars, drinking and shit. And by that time, we'd become friends. And we were walking out of a bar and these guys come up. One of them's carrying a baseball bat. And... <laughs> You like it's like a movie. <laughs> they, they start. They start. Apparently, he had. They had some problems with him, and they were waiting for us to come out. And uh, they started running their mouth, and I looked at him. I'm like, "All right, let's do this." And he said, "No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not going to fight them." And he he did everything he could to avoid an altercation. He, you know, he when me and him fought, it was out of mutual respect, basically. But when these guys were trying to jump him, he was trying to talk his way out of the situation. And then when it got to the point where it was the point of no return, basically, where there was no choice, but that this altercation was going to happen, he kicked their asses before I could do anything. I mean, it, <laughs> it was so fucking impressive. Down in his basement, he used to have this, uh, I'd say it was a maybe a railroad tie or a six by six piece of wood. And he would just over and over and over again, elbow it and knee it, trying to build up the calcium deposits. Mm-hmm. So when, when you got hit by one of his elbows, it was just like getting hit with a fucking baseball bat. Damn. Nice. And were those other, was that other group of people, the ones that like challenged him? Do you think that was a Doug from a different timeline? <laughs> <laughs> that was meth and crack a different Doug. company now. <laughs> So yeah. I, I, in, in all honesty, I know we got to wrap this up in all honesty. I, I regret a lot of the decisions I made to pe- the innocent people that I may <laughs> have gotten involved in my lifestyle, but I am thankful for the experiences. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the press release that. at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when well, you finally get sued, awesome. when you finally get sued for the damage you caused, that's can be your like opening speech, your opening statement. <laughs> Your Honor, <laughs> let me just say this. <laughs> His face was I'm begging proud. for a slugging. Your Honor, I know <laughs> what I did was wrong, but it was slur. pretty cool, right? <laughs> You've got to give me points for how cool the story ends, sir. <laughs> uh, all right, should we wrap? Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, can wrap. Yeah, probably. Okay, Doug, okay. shout out your shit. Uh, check me and Anthony out over at who's right podcast.com again. Uh, thank you guys for the exposure you've given us. And, and, and I don't know what this says about your show or our show, but it seems like the listeners enjoy, if they enjoy you, they enjoy us. So. Mm-hmm. Check them out. All right. Well, thanks okay. for coming on. Wrap us up, Jackson. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We got a Patreon at patreon.com slash the official podcast bonus episodes as well as early access. And we're releasing a uh, watch along of the Halo thing. Like we said at the start, Kyra and I watched mm-hmm. that. It was a lot of fun. So that should be up fairly soon. Uh, we're we're going to do got... that weekly, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
iTunes as well. You can go listen to the show on there and Spotify as well. Feel free to give us a rating. That always helps out. And yeah, that's that's all. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.